everyone, this is Anastasia and in today's video I'm going to be making a collage based off of the October art prompt. So to start with, I'm grabbing this color palette which I got from colorlovers.com. It's based off of an opal which is October birthstone. And I'm going into the color selector and going to photo colors and selecting this purple as my background. The base color for my background. And I'm going to keep this color palette on the page because I want to pick up other colors for other elements later on. And if I take it off, then it'll disappear from the um, color selector. So now I'm going through my vintage paper collection and I'm grabbing a, I think it's a, another book. It's a bookend that I got from the Library of Congress website and I'm adding it to the canvas. And I'm placing that on top of the purple background and then I'm adjusting the transparency so it just blends in with the purple and you can see a pattern and I'm going into my flowers collection now and I had saved this hibiscus image from Pixabay because one of the suggestions on the prompt uh, PDF was to use hibiscus flowers and I thought it might be cute but I quickly realized that this was not the the vibe that I wanted for my collage so I'm scrolling down my flowers collection and then I'm looking for roses which is another suggested flower so I have these two flowers and I have this um, group of roses and I think that's baby's breath and all of these flower images I got from Pixabay Honestly, it's a lifesaver because I use a lot of these flowers all the time. Okay, and then also from Pixabay, I got this graphic of Pluto, or they said it was Pluto. It could honestly be any planet. I'm placing it in this corner over here, moving it back, and now I'm messing around with the flowers. So a lot of my collages, I build them intuitively. I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't necessarily go in with a set of specific graphics that I want to use. I have colors in mind. I may have a, a focus image in mind. I have a lot of things that I tend to use a lot, like uh, round objects or watercolor blobs, and I just add stuff on until I think the collage looks done. This is a it's a watercolor circle, which I got from Pixabay, and I'm adding it on top of Pluto and then adjusting the transparency so it's more, it's almost a filter on top of Pluto, so the color is um, just kind of adding to that. It's not just straight up brown, it's now got orange and green in it, which you can see there is orange in the suggested colors. So now I've got more of my beloved paint blobs from Pixabay. And these ones aren't an exact match for the color palette up there, but it's close enough that it, I'm happy with it. So I'm just adding them around. I really like these color blobs and I wish I could find more. I'm probably going to end up having to make my own because I need more colors. I don't have any green blobs. <laughs> Okay, so now I've realized that that pink rose is no good and that the white rose I still like but it's a little big. So I just shrunk it down and I'm still not sure where I'm going to put it. I'm just kind of trying to keep it out of the way while I build the rest of the collage and then I'll add it in somewhere later on. One more watercolor blob. The downside with Canva is sometimes it's hard to grab onto specific layers. It's not a, it's not like with Photoshop where you have a list of the layers. You have to kind of just keep clicking until you find the one that you want and sometimes you end up grabbing the wrong image. Here I'm just a, um, using a filter to adjust the coloring of those roses. They're pretty bright and I want to make them blend in more. With the, well not blend I keep saying that but really I just want the tones to match so they don't so one image element doesn't stand out over the other I want the focus image to stand out not these background elements 
And so here I'm grabbing a sunburst, which I got, I think from Pixabay again, or possibly Canva. And I'm changing the color to match the uh, color palette from suggestions, the color suggestions. Okay, so now it's time to add the focus image. People are almost always my focus image. So I found this amazing photo of this woman um, on Flickr's, I think it's the photo commons. It's from the 1800s and it's a cabinet card and I thought it was amazing. It's not the highest quality scan, but it works for an eight and a half by 11 collage. So I'm just using the background remover to remove the background. It worked really well and I'm just gonna flip it because I want her facing that way. So now that I have my focus image there, I can start building the rest of the collage. So I'm duplicating the rose group. I don't know what to call it. The, ro the group of roses and I'm adding some more over onto the side. You can see I've um, adjusted the angle so it's not an exact replica of the rose roses that are down there on the right. I figured out where to put that white rose. I'm going to stick it behind her. There we go. Adjusting the colors to kind of flow better with the rest of the piece. And I'm adjusting her. So her original coloring was more of a dark sepia tone, um, but I wanted it to be more of a black and white grayscale color. Now I'm going into my vintage animals collection and I'm looking for things with wings. So I got that moth and a butterfly. I like the butterfly because of the red. It kind of goes with the roses and it'd be nice to have another point of red in the collage, especially since it's not a suggested color. Red is a complementary color for the, for the purple especially. So I've put the moth behind her, kind of like she has wings. It doesn't bug me that the antennae stick out behind her head. It just, you know, it doesn't bother me. I do want it to be more grayscale, so I adjusted the, fil the colors that way with using the filter. Back into the vintage paper collection. Okay, so this is a scanned image of a book cover, which I got from the Library of Congress. It, I'm got, it might be leather. Anyway, it's really cool looking. So I'm going to use it. At first I thought I might want it to put it behind her as a kind of um, just a line across the middle of the page. And then I realized I didn't like that. And I moved it down to the bottom, which I think it looks better there. Kind of fills in that gap on the bottom left. So I selected this scan of a French book page, which I think I got from either Unsplash or Library of Congress. I thought maybe it'd be nice to put somewhere, but I ended up not liking it. And then I put it so far back behind all the layers that it would, it took me a little bit to get it out again. So, you know, the nice thing about doing digital collages is I can add stuff on and then just delete it if it doesn't work. And like, with paper collages, I'd have to rip it off the page or just deal with it. This way I can get things looking how I like them. So I have saved a couple elements from Canva that I really like using, um, including these little crosses. And I'm just putting them across the page and I have these bigger crosses that I have put them in that orange kind of, I guess it's like a salmon orange. I'm just gonna add this in. I really like hand doodle elements. I think it makes the collage look more like hands made. Even though it is a digital collage, it's nice to have hand made elements to give it a realistic feel. So here I am dragging the color palette out of the way. Here I am selecting a swirl. I love putting swirls in the backgrounds of my collages. And I'm selecting that blue color from the color palette. And then I have to adjust the transparency so it just becomes another texture in the background. Send it to the back and then move it one layer forward so it's on top of that book page that we put on top of the purple background. So there you can see. Oh, and I finally deleted that French page, which didn't work. Now I'm looking for some lines. 
I like to put circles and lines in collages. It's a good way to draw the eye around the collage and it gives more texture. This is a dotted line. And I'm adding more of those crosses. This collage had a lot of fiddling. I w because I was using more colors than I had in the previous collage, um, it took me a bit to figure out what color I actually wanted to wear. And so you can see here, I'm changing the color of those little crosses from black to yellow. And it's a similar, similar yellow to the uh, Starburst color. And then I think I end up changing the color again. Um, and I definitely changed the color again for the bigger crosses. Okay, so here's another page. I got that from, I think, Unsplash. And I'm adding it to the top as a mat for my title. I tend to put titles at the top because I share my collages a lot online. And I think it's the eye automatically goes to the top to look for a title. Um, that's, or maybe that's just me. I don't know. This little tag I got from, oh gosh, uh, I think the Smithsonian. They have a digital collection that you can use and I found that tag. I thought maybe the red and the brown would look good with the rest of the collage. This moon is a stereoscope, is that what it's called? Um, I got that from the New York Public Library's digital collection. Okay, so I've put it back there. And now I'm looking for a lighter color. I think that's a book. No, it's not a book page. That is a vintage paper background that I got from Pixabay. And I'm, that's where I'm actually going to put the text is on that lighter colored one. I'm slightly adjusting that butterfly. At this point, the butterfly is kind of bugging me, but I really like it. It's just also kind of just hanging out there by itself, which I don't like. So I'm giving it the side eye. And here I am getting a scribble which I had saved before. This is a really good scribble but it does get blurry if you blow it up too much so I don't use it a lot. And I'm going to put it all the way in the back because I think it'll go well with the black of that stereoscope. And I'm duplicating it and then putting it down in the bottom corner as well. So it also goes with the focus image because I changed her colors to be more of a black and white or grayscale color and now there's more points of black around there and I think it looks kind of neat and I'm just adjusting the colors of that little paper tag the paper tag is also kind of bugging me because it's not exactly in the right place but I try not to obsess too much about things like that because I'll figure out where to put it eventually here you can see I'm just moving it Okay, so now I'm adding um, the title, which is part of a quote, a very small part of a quote. You know, it is what it is. It's just two words, but I really like them. And the, it's from my uh, suggested quotes list for the October art prompt. Now, adjusting the size, adjusting the position, letter spacing, making it look good. I have the font automatically set to my favorite in my brand settings, which is a typewriter font. I like that. It's it's old fashioned. Maybe it's a little bit overused even, but again, it gives it that handmade quality. Okay, so now I'm searching for coffee stains and I'm filtering to, to, for static image and free. What Canva has ended up doing recently is they've been pushing their animated elements and I never use those in my collages and it's just a pain to try and get through them to find the static ones so and okay so here's one this just adds again it adds more texture and more interest and the color is kind of like is an orangey brown which goes with the orange in the rest of the piece and also the brown of the book pages that I've put around And now I'm messing with the butterfly again. And at this point, I think I figured out um, that I forgot to, yeah, I forgot to put my blog address as my watermark. So I'm going back to do that. I always put my watermark on my, 
collages so if someone shares it outside of my normal channels they can find me so I'm just putting it down there in the corner okay so now I'm zooming in to check on my collage I'm looking at each element to see if they work uh, here I'm changing the font color for the title because I realized that I didn't want it to be black I wanted it to be a really dark brown and at this point I take the opportunity to look and make sure that nothing looks too blurry or pixelated if something's missing I try to add it in so here I'm adding in more of the little crosses because I think that little piece underneath the butterfly needs something did an orange color for them which I think I ended up changing that it's nice just to play around and see what looks good and because it's digital you can just change your mind and delete if something doesn't work you can just delete it and I'm fixing these big crosses so it touches the title card which makes the title card look more like part of the collage kind of anchoring it with those crosses and then I'm looking and the butterfly I, re I figured out what to do copy it and put another one over here and make the color slightly different so it's not an exact copy and it's more visually interesting so there I accidentally put it too far back but using the keyboard shortcuts I was able to fix it and bring it back up to the top in the layers see there I accidentally grabbed her and now I got it so I figured it out and now I'm trying to get that rose that's behind her and it took a little bit but I was able to click through and grab it and then I just moved it using the keyboard so I thought maybe I needed more roses so I duplicated that white rose and just moved it up there the upside too is that the white will help move your eye up towards the title which is very white itself and I'm centering that because I forgot to do that earlier. I don't always make my titles centered, but um, it's better to make it deliberately off-centered than forgetting to center it. So, And now I'm duplicating those little lines that I put there earlier and moving them up because I thought it needed something up there. So they ended up being slightly off-center and I had to go fix them later and it was very annoying kind of adding more things in. I don't think I overcrowd my collages because that's my style and I enjoy it, but sometimes I do wonder if I add too many things. <laughs> so I had them that yellow color and now I'm changing them to the orange color to match the other little crosses that I turned to orange. But now the big ones, I don't wanna be orange because I want them to stand out more. So I'm changing them to that yellow color, which I think was a good idea too, because I didn't really have a lot of that yellow except for the sunburst. And now that I have made those big crosses yellow, it just brightens up the whole piece, which I think is good. So I'm trying to adjust her um, tint to be more yellow, but nothing's really happening. Uh, I think maybe a little bit you could tell, but here it's just manually trying to adjust it and make it look good, but the tint's not really where I wanted. I thought maybe doing this vignette, is that how you say it, would be good, but unfortunately it um, the shadows came in in the corners of where the, the image was before I removed the background, and I really hate that, so I had to remove that vignette. If I'm saying that wrong, please let me know, because I probably am. And these are just the final tweaks now. I'm just going through and trying to find some combination of filters and color adjustments to make it look like those wings really are attached to this woman as best I can, while also not making them completely different tones. Oh, and see so here you can see that the, um, the dotted lines are out of alignment and this drove me crazy trying to get them correct it's just and then it turned out that one was on a different layer than the other one and that's why I couldn't get it right there we go so oh and then canva very helpfully um, puts up guides 
or when you're trying to center or match something up with their, another element. So that was very helpful. And now I'm just doing little tiny tweaks and I think this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you want to learn how to make your own digital collage using Canva on your desktop, please visit my website. I've got how to instructional blog posts and I'm going to be making more videos on how to make collages. So thanks for watching. And um, here is a close up of the final collage. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if you want to see more, please subscribe.